to ensure the, um, the stru structural integrity and these specific um, initial loadings can influence the fatigue resistance. To study this phenomenon, we consider um, uh, stiffener structures, welded structures. We applied proof loads and then we observe a beneficial influence of a proof load on the fatigue resistance. So the question is how, how to integrate this effect in a fatigue design approach. So the objective of this work is to set up a fatigue design strategy which integrate the influence of a proof load on the fatigue resistance of welded structures. And the scope of this study will consider the impact of residual stresses in strain and hardening effects. We integrate the influence of the load ratio effect and we focus only on moderate proof load. That means no ductile damage. I will present this presentation in uh, three parts. First one, the main experimental results we obtain. Uh, mainly the influence of the air ratio, the influence of a proof load magnitude, and then the consequences on the res residual stress field. Then I will present the um, numerical model we set up, and I will finish with some conclusion. So first, th about the stiffener structures, I give the main macroscopical dimension on, the, on this figure. It's made with a S355 steel, using the metal active gas process, and a slot thickness of four millimeters. About the fatigue testing procedure, so we use a servo hydraulic machine, and on the right, on the figure, I give the um, uh, typical uh, loading path we use. So we have a nominal stress here, according to the time. So for proof loaded structure, we applied an initial proof load, you come back to zero, and then you apply a cyclic loading. The so test frequency for uh, cyclic loading is uh, 10 hertz, and we consider two uh, air ratio, 0 0.1 or minus one. Then I will present you the fatigue results. So I give in the, on the roller curve the nominal stress range according to the number of cycles to failure. On this graph, we can see um, as well dead structures tested with uh, air ratio 0 0.1 in full black and uh, proof loaded structures and then securely tested with a stress uh, air ratio 0 0.1 in um, empty, empty, empty black. So we can see the beneficial influence of a proof load on the fatigue resistance and the effect is greater for the um, low uh, nominal stress range. When we do the same exercise on um, as well dead structure and proof loaded structure with, tested with the air ratio of minus one, first we observe there is negligible effect of the air, uh, air ratio on as well dead structures, but we have a um, non negligible effect of the air ratio on between the uh, um, proof loaded structure between the both. And um, we also observe a beneficial influence of a proof load on the fatigue resistance. On this uh, graph, I present the all results you obtain in this study. So we have in um, a gray, black, uh, blue, and purple, all the results uh, um, dealing with um, air ratio 0 0.1. So we can see uh, I, for each proof load, a beneficial influence on the fatigue resistance here, here, and uh, here, and um, what is in very interesting to note is when you apply a compressive proof, proof, proof load, um, orange and, um, and uh, yellow points, so over there and over there, there is no effect of a compressive proof, proof load on the fatigue resistance. Then to more understand the, the phenomenon, we, co we undertake um, residual stresses analysis. So in the stress concentration zone, we, we electropolished the zone um, on a depth uh, on a depth of one uh, one hundred microns, and then we re realized diuretic measurements. So on only one structure, we applied eleven um, successive proof load in ascending order, and so we applied the proof load to come back to zero, and we conduct uh, direct measurements, and uh, we used the diameter collimator of two millimeters, and then with um, longitudinal and uh, transversal residual stresses, we calculate an hydrostatic stress. So this graph, which gives a res residual hydrostatic st uh, stress according to the nominal stress applied for the proof load. We can see that at the initial state, uh, before uh, we apply the proof load, we have a 
extraction um, residual stresses, which correspond to the um, welding process uh, residual stresses. And then when we applied a proof load, we have reduced the, um, the residual stresses and we have a compressive um, residual stress for um, the greater proof loads. So in conclusion to this first uh, experimental part, we saw a beneficial influence of uh, proof load on the fatigue resistance and the proof load affect the result stress field uh, in the stress concentration zone. So now I will present you um, the numerical model we set up to integrate the influence of a proof load on the fatigue resistance. So first I will give you some details about the geometry image generation and boundary conditions. Then I will give you the, um, the influence of the material behavior chosen on the result stress field. And I will finish with the fatigue resistance predictions. So about the geometry, um, we used an uh, idealized uh, geometry of the well tool. That means no radius. And uh, the element size in the stress concentration zone are of 50 microns. microns. About the um, boundary conditions, um, we blocked the displacement on, the, on this face, on the UX displacements, the UY displacement on this line, and the uh, UZ on this line. And we apply a uniform pressure on the opposite face. About the material behavior, so we, we suppose a kinematic hardening behavior. To identify the um, material parameters, we suppose we use the, uh, an empirical relationship between um, hardness and yield stress proposed by, by Art in 1979. And so this graph, which gives the evolution of the true stress according to the true strain of the, um, of the material model chosen. So uh, it's important to note that we suppose an homogeneous behavior between for the base metal, it affected zone and welded, welded zone equal to uh, it affected zone uh, behavior. Now about the um, fatigue crit crit criterion we proposed to integrate the influence of the multi-axial multi stress state, we consider the uh, cross-term criterion, which combines the influence of the square root of the um, uh, second invariant of the deviatoric stress tensor and the maximum of the hydrostatic stress and two parameters, alpha and beta. Then to, to integrate the influence of the geometrical singularity and the stress gradient effect, we consider um, a, a non-local approach or based on a critical distance approach. So to calculate the two, both vari va variables on each element, we um, consider a sphere and we average the both variables on each sphere. And then to take into account the influence of the strain hardening effect, we multiply the previous criterion by this, by this ratio between the initial um, yield stress and the maximum between the um, non-local um, von Mises stress and the um, initial yield stress. So if, if there is no plasticity, this ratio equal to one. And if we, if, if we have some plasticity, the um, non-local von, uh, von Mises stress will be greater than the uh, initial yield stress and uh, this ratio will become uh, lower than one. So this um, criterion um, has four parameters, the um, waste of the hydrostatic stress, alpha, beta the second order, the second number, rho the um, average uh, sphere radius, and f the impact of the strain hardening. First, I will present the results about the, um, the influence of the material behavior. So on this graph, we, you, which gives the residual hydrostatic stress according to the nominal stress applied for each different proof load. In, in green, you have the previous result I, I presented, experimental uh, results. I had, I had two curves. The one uh, in red, we suppose an homogeneous behavior. So is this one I presented uh, before in the numerical, uh, numerical. And in, uh, in blue, I suppose homogeneous behavior. And I consider um, initial residual stress field to integrate the influence of um, the residual stress field from um, a welding process. What we can observe is that when we applied uh, a proof load, the difference between the blue and the red curve is um, very small and it's uh, a good agreement with experimental results. The only difference is the initial stage where we have a large difference, but it's normal because we haven't considered the result stress, initial result stresses field on this uh, red curve. That means that in this case, the initial result stress field um, 
from the, from the welding process to the second order parameters. It's an important result. And now about um, the fatigue prediction. So to identify the different parameter of the criterion, we suppose a Baskin relation between the number of cycles and the equivalent stress. So this graph gives the equivalent stress according to the number of cycles to failure. I, I've plotted the whole um, re, uh, fati um, fatigue result obtained in this study. And we can see that uh, all the results are gathered around a unique master curve. And this show that uh, both result stresses and strain hardening must be considered to integrate the influence of first a proof load and the influence of uh, air ratio in the fatigue design of this kind of welded structure. So to conclude this, uh, this work, uh, from experimental results, we, we saw that we have a beneficial influence of the of, of uh, proof load in the fatigue resistance, and this, um, this influence increased when the, um, the, the difference between the maximum uh, load applied during the, um, the proof load and the maximum load applied during the cyclic loading increased. As well, that structure as insensitive to the stress ratio. However, we have a significant influence of the stress ratio on proof loaded structures. And proof load um, um, have an influence on the um, residual stress field in the um, stress concentration zone. From the numerical study, we have a good correlation between, between experimental and numerical results about the numerical, numerical um, residual stress field. And we show that. Um, Residual stress, field, residual stress from um, um, welding process are a second order parameters in this case. And the, prop the proposed model is adapted to fatigue design as welded structures and proof loaded structures um, tested with different stress ratio. Thank you for your attention. Thank you very much. Any questions?